Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla. I am IATF qualified auditor doing audit for the automotive sector for the last 18 years. I am again back with a very very interesting topic that is about 4M changes, man, machine, material and method. That what exactly is 4M change and what are the possible challenges that industry is facing with respect to it. So when we talk about 4M change in our day to day life, we change so many things happening around us uh, knowingly and unknowingly. Say for example, in a home, when the socket has some problem, we just remove the wires and just put it directly into the pin, three pin plug, and then it starts working. But we don't realize what can be the possible risk that we can get. Or maybe when we are going for the office and we just go out and we see a flat tire. So what we'll do means so either we'll go to catch a metro, or maybe a bus or maybe some other way. And these are all the very common things that happen around us. Something similar happens in the industry. But the only thing is that the, here the stakes are very high because most of the manufacturing industries are working 365 days of a year and 24 hours a day. So there is very little and I can say no scope with respect to the any failures. So that's why this 4M change becomes very, very important. And if you look at from the industry perspective, this 4M change, man, machine, material, method, this change can be planned or it can be unplanned. And generally when it is planned, it is primarily easy to manage it. But the real challenge comes when this 4M changes are happening in an unplanned manner because of certain issue that we have to do for this 4M change. So what to do with it, how to deal with that, that's what all this video about. So in this particular video, I'm going to talk about what exactly is this 4M change, how to effectively implement in a systematic manner this 4M change, why it is important to implement 4M change effectively, what happens when 4M change is not effectively implemented, what are the benefits that top management can gain by effective implementation of 4M change and what are the present industry challenges that we are facing with respect to 4M change. So let's first start with what exactly is this 4M change. So when we talk about 4M change, that is 4Ms, men, machine, material and method. So let's start with men first. So when we talk about men, so in a particular industry, there is always a possibility that there is a manpower which is being used, which is qualified to operate a certain machine. And because of any reason, it could be absenteeism, it could be any job change or maybe that person is occupied in some other process, could be pandemic or festival, that person is not available. So what to do at that time? So we need to use an alternate person for some temporary time frame and we need to ensure that that person should be competent in carrying out that particular activity. In general in industry, especially in automotive industry, MSA, measurement system analysis is being used to uh, ensure the repeatability and reproducibility of that particular process. So if I give an example with respect to that, let's consider an example of a drilling machine which we are using. And say for example, the particular qualified operator is not available on that day. So maybe on that particular day, we use an alternate person to do that particular thing. But we need to make sure that that person should be competent to do that particular thing. And that person should know the previous history that what all has happened previously, what kind of customer complaint has come and what are the irregular rejections that are coming so that whenever that person is working, that person can work effectively on that. So that brings the second thing. Man, machine. Now we are talking about machine. Now in this particular case, it's a very interesting thing because in majority of the cases, the machine is being approved by the customer or maybe if it is not approved by the customer, it is internally approved that for this particular product, we need to use this particular machine. Now because of any reason, maybe because the machine is under breakdown or maybe uh, we need to use an alternate machine because that machine is occupied for something else or there can be anything else also. So in that case, when we are using a different kind of machine, how we are making sure that whatever risk analysis that we are doing, whether it is uh, taking care about all the possible failures or not, are we making sure that whatever is the cost of production that is going to come from that new alternate method, whether it is within the specification or it is going out or not, are we taking care with respect to the productivity, quality, process capability before using the alternate machine? These are all the pertinent questions that we need to ask. And in general, SPC is one of the techniques that is being used with respect to that. So talk about the same example of the drilling machine. Now in this particular case, in case that particular drilling machine is under breakdown and we are using a different drilling machine, right? So we need to ask all these questions to make sure that 
uh, that whatever output that is going to come from that that is fulfilling to the customer requirement and that brings the third part man machine now method so when we talk about method here the intent is that whatever method that we are using with respect to that particular process and we are changing that say for example we are having a certain kind of environment for storing certain material maybe with a humidity of say less than 50 percent or maybe a certain temperature say between 20 to 25 degrees and because of any reason we are changing that so how to deal with that particular situation or maybe say for example we have implemented a poka yoka and because of any reason that poka yoka is not working so whatever product that is coming out at that particular time are we making sure that it is fulfilling to the requirement and non-conforming material is not going out so that being the fourth part material now it is very common that uh, the material is generally being approved by the customer because it is related to the cost and also with respect to the quality of the product now because of any reason because of non-availability of the material because of pandemic uh, in many of the cases, the material used to be imported from China and after pandemic, many things have changed after that. Now we are using an alternate grade at that time. So whenever we are using an alternate material, how to deal with that situation, how to make sure that whatever material that we are using now, it is fulfilling to the requirement and it is not going to impact the customer in any way, that is important to look at from that perspective. And apart from this 4M, there are two more M generally, which is generally being used in the industry. That is about measurement and mother environment. So there are also certain things that we need to take care while implementing that. Now it brings to the next step that how to effectively implement 4M changes. So when we talk about ISO 9001 and IAT of 16949 as per clause number 8.5.6, there are certain things which are being specified that if they are being effectively or systematically implemented, that can make sure that 4M changes are being effectively implemented. So the first thing is procedure. So when we talk about procedure, the intent is that there should be a procedure how to do the 4M change wherein the alternate method for inspection, testing, error proofing, etc. they all are being defined with respect to that. A procedure that how to do the approval that is being specified and also there is a method that while implementing a new change we need to do a risk analysis. It can be in the form of FMEA that can be done with respect to that or maybe in case any customer approval is required that procedure is also can be defined with respect to that. So that brings point number two, that is documentation, which is generally missing in most of the cases. So here the intent is that whenever we are doing any 4M change, it should be properly documented. Whatever is the alternate method, we need to specify that, how we are using that. And for each alternate method, whatever is a required work instructions or maybe any other change that is required, we need to specify that and we need to make sure that when we are implementing that, whatever changes are coming, everything is being documented. That brings point number three, that is with respect to the periodical review, that we did some change, but unless and until we are regularly monitoring that whatever changes that we have done, whether they are actually implemented the way in which it has been planned or something has changed. So that's what we are talking with respect to the periodic change, the periodic review at the particular time. That brings point number four and that point number four is with respect to verification that we did some change, we are doing the periodic review, but are we verifying it from time to time that whatever has been implemented as an alternate method, whether exactly that is being done in the same way or certain changes have started coming in there. And there are different ways to do that. It can be done in the form of a layered audit and it is also a customer requirement, especially the IAT of subscribing OEM requirement, wherein they do specify to do the layered audit or it can be the daily review meeting or there can be many other methods which can be done. So that brings point number five, that is about customer approval. Now this is something which is the most important thing, but in majority of the cases that is not being done. So here the intent is that whenever we are making any change and it is going to impact the customer, we need to take the customer approval. We need to tell the customer that these are the changes which are coming and this is the possible problem which is there and but based on some risk analysis that has been done, now this is the alternate method that will be done. Please approve that. All that thing needs to be done. That brings point number six. That is about traceability. But it is good that we made the change. Maybe a permanent change or maybe a temporary change. But we need to see that on which date this particular change has been implemented. Whether that 
change can be tracked or not that's all with respect to the traceability process so in traceability the intent is that when we did the job setup when we change the job setup when we use the alternate method when we use the a different manpower everything should be documented maybe based on the manpower maybe on the batch code or maybe the date or maybe some identification on the material so that in case any problem is there everything can be tracked back that brings last and the the seventh point that is about the restart verification because if it is a temporary change and we are coming back so in that particular case we need to make sure that when we are restarting with the original specification or the the same manpower that was used earlier so in that case we need to see that whether now everything is same which was there or something has drastically changed in between say for example a month or so so all that thing are a part of that restart verification part so that brings another important question that why this temporary change or this forum change is important so first thing is that when we effectively implement these temporary changes it helps to reduce or minimize the internal and external complaints it helps to lower the cost of poor quality it enhances the trust between the organization and the customer customer becomes a partner in solving the customer this all these issues and there is no surprise in the product quality that is going to be there that brings another important question that why this 4m change is not effectively implemented in practice so there are certain reasons for that the first and the most important reason is that there is very low trust or no trust between the organization and the customer that in case anything is being communicated it will be actually accepted the second thing is the customer also does not trust the supplier and then there are certain additional cost whenever doing any 4m change so whether the management is going to accept or bear all that cost or not and at times it is being seen that organization does not foresee that any 4m change can result in any defect and in majority of the cases the job setup is not being done in an effective manner which results in many of the causes and the risk analysis especially in the form of fme which should have been done in the beginning actually either it is not being done or it is just a paper formality which is being done and in many cases it is being seen that whatever is the internal communication that is actually not effective and majority of the key stakeholders are not actually aware about any of the forum change what can be the benefit if uh, the forum change is effectively implemented to the top management the first and the foremost is that it will enhance the reputation and reliability with the customer it will improve and give more empowerment to the employees that yes they can do it it will bring the transparency in the entire organization as well as with respect to the customer and overall cost of quality will improve and the cost will go down to talk about some of the key challenges that industry is facing with respect to the 4m changes the first and the foremost is how often whenever we are making any 4m change we are actually documenting it secondly whenever we are doing any 4m change are we doing any risk analysis thirdly when we are doing any 4m change are we actually communicating to the customer and taking approval of that and the fourth and the most important is how often whenever we are implementing this 4m change we regularly review that all those changes are actually being implemented the way it has been planned and do we document and record everything or not so if i do a summary i talked about what exactly is 4m change how to effectively implement systematically this 4m change why this 4m change is important for its effectiveness what are the challenges that industry is facing with respect to this 4m change because of the lack of implementation how the top management can get benefited if 4m change is being effectively implemented and what are the present industry challenges that we are facing well my next topic will be with respect to the key difference between the outsource process and the bottom part regularly i am getting a lot of feedback from your side and they are helping me to understand your expectation so please do continue that and in case you want to understand about this video a little bit more in detail so you find there's a link below if you click that you will find a blog there and there you will find this particular information in much more detail and in case you are liking these kind of videos and blogs you can always share with your friends and colleagues and you can subscribe to my youtube channel and my website bhavyamangla.com thank you